Hi everybody, I hope you're enjoying your snow day. I'm recording this from home while we are all off because of a snowstorm. This is the Moles Extra Practice sheet that you got to practice for the take home and to practice for the in-class exam. I changed the view a little bit, um, but it's the same questions. So if you could take yours out, this is what it looks like on the top. Number one, it says find the gram formula mass, and there are two examples. So you should have that out for this particular video. So if we look at the first one here, it says to find the gram formula mass. Remember when we're finding the gram formula mass, uh, you need your periodic table and you need a calculator. And so for the first one here, we're going to multiply mg times 3 because of this subscript of 3. On the periodic table, we're going to round magnesium's mass to the nearest tenth. And when we do that and then multiply by 3, we get 72.9. Remember that this 2 multiplies by whatever is inside the parentheses. I want to cover up the formula. So um, that means that we're going to take the mass of phosphorus and multiply it by 2. And when we do that, we're going to round phosphorus to the nearest tenth and then multiply it by 2. We get 62.0. This 2 multiplies by the 4, giving us an 8. So we're going to do the mass of oxygen times 8, which comes out to 16.0 times 8, which is 128.0. Then we're going to add these three numbers together and get 262.9 grams, and that will be the mass of one mole. Remember, these masses all come from taking the masses from the periodic table. And multiply, I'm sorry, rounding to the nearest tenth, and then multiplying by the total number of moles of atoms in the formula. If we then wanted to take an amount of grams of magnesium phosphate and convert to moles, remember there were two methods. So if you are in the advanced class, this is the method that we used. We multiplied by a fraction where the numerator equals the denominator, and in this case, one mole is equal to 262.9 grams. So grams cancel, and when we multiply, we wind up getting the answer of 0 0.7607 moles. If you're not in the advanced class, we did it a different way, and we use the formula from table T number of moles equals given mass over the gram formula mass grams divided by 262.9 grams but the setup looked a little bit different 0 0.7607 moles is still the answer so whether you use the formula from table T or whether you use the dimensional analysis process you still should get the same answer we're just going to do the first of each of these so that we can get some um, get some more stuff done here. Again, if you're in the advanced class, we took the given amount and we put it over 1. We multiplied by a fraction where the numerator is equal to the denominator. So for magnesium phosphate, again, 262.9 grams is equal to 1 mole. Moles cancel, and when we multiplied out, we get the answer of 95 grams. If you're using this formula, number of moles equals given mass over gram formula mass, you're going to wind up putting in 0.36 moles equals x over the gram formula mass, which is 262.9 grams, and you still get the same answer of 95 grams. If we want to find the percent composition of these problems, remember that we're going to do the formula for mass of part over mass of whole times 100 is what our percent equals. So for magnesium phosphate, to get the percent of magnesium, we're going to put this mass for magnesium, which was 72.9, over the total mass, which was 262.9 times 100. 
and that came out to 27.7 percent. Well, we're not doing this one. For the percent of phosphorus, we did phosphorus as part, which if you look up to number one was 62.0 over the total, which was 262.9 times 100, and that came out to 23.6%. And if we want to get the percent of oxygen, we put oxygen's total, which was 128, over the total mass of 262.9 times 100, and we get 48.7%. And when we add these percents together, we should get about 100, and we do get close to 100. Because of the rounding to the nearest tenth, that's why we wound up not getting all the way up to the 100. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. We do get to 100 because 7 and 7 is 14, and another 6 is our, is our 0 there. So when you add up your percents of your parts, you should get uh, very close to, if not, 100. We move to the next couple of questions. The next set, again, I'm just going to do one of each type on here, is finding percent water in a hydrate. And when we want to find the percent water in a hydrate, remember that the crucible is the container. So the first thing you're going to do is multi I'm sorry, is subtract the mass of the container from each of the measurements that were measured in the container to get the masses of the hydrate salt and the anhydrous salt. When we subtract here, we get 6.2 grams of the wet or the hydrate salt. When we do this subtraction here, we get 3.7 grams of the dry salt. So remember, we're going to do wet salt minus dry salt to find out the mass of the water lost. And when you do that on the calculator, you get 2.5 grams of water lost. And for our hydrates, we're always going to do percent equals water over wet salt times 100. So we do 2.5 grams over 6.2 grams times 100. And in this case, we got 40%. If instead we're doing percent by mass of water in a hydrate from the formula, we're going to find the gram formula mass. And in this case, we're going to do Fe times 1, S times 1, O times 4, and we're going to keep the water together and do H2O times 7. Remember that H2O has a mass of 18.0 grams for one mole, so that's always the number that we use here. For iron rounded to the nearest tenth, we get 55.8. For sulfur rounded to the nearest tenth, we get 32.1. Oxygen to the nearest tenth is 16.0 times 4 is 64, and 18 times 7 gives us 126.0. We add these together, and the gram formula mass for this hydrate is 277.9 grams equals 1 mole. For percent of water, we're going to do the part for the water which was 126.0 over the total, which was 277.9 times 100, and we get 45.34. Don't forget to put your percent sign after it. <clears throat> if we want to do this question here, which is called a mole, mole problem. Whenever it says how many moles of something, if this many moles of something else, we always put our x over what it asked about. So it asked about NH3, so we put an x. It says 5 moles of H2, so I put a 5 over my H2, and this sets up a proportion. 5 over 3 equals x over 2. Cross multiply. 3x equals 10, 
And when we finally finish that question, we get x equals 3.3 .3 moles. Moving on to the last few questions. Again, we're just doing one of each kind. I go back to selecting my pen. Hold on one second. So we're going to skip number seven, but number eight says to balance and state the reaction type. In order to state the reaction type first, what I should notice is that I have element and element. I have a single element on each side and a compound and a compound on each side. So I'm going to call this one single replacement. On the next question, I notice that I have element and element making one product, one compound. So I'm going to call this reaction synthesis because I'm making something bigger. For this reaction, I have compound, 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 I don't know why it won't highlight that, compound, those four compounds, compound, 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 I call double replacement because I have double compounds on each side. And for this one, I have one big piece breaking up into two smaller pieces, that would be decomposition. If I erase all my highlights, I can do my balancing. I already thought I don't need to erase these. Remember to balance an equation, we're going to say that our arrow is an equal sign. And the first thing that we're going to do is list the elements that are found on each side. I have a two after my BR, so that means that there's two BRs on this side. No subscript after my BR here, so that's a one. K and I, neither one has a subscript and there's no coefficient, so that's a one of each. I has a two after it. K has nothing, so that's a one. I somehow have to get there to be the same number of moles of atoms on each side by using numbers in the front. If I put a two, just change my color for a second here. If I put a two here, that multiplies by everything that comes after it until the next plus minus uh, equal sign or arrow. So that means that that is telling me two Ks and two BRs. So I've gotten my BRs in balance, but I've thrown my Ks out of balance. If I put a 2 here, that multiplies also by the k and the i. That makes 2 k's and 2 i's. Now I have the same numbers for each element, for atoms, moles of atoms on each side. I can, if I want to, go in and put 1's here. I don't have to put 1's there. But if you don't want to leave a blank line, remember you can't put a 0 there. But if you want to put a number on the line so that there's no blanks, you would put ones because there's always an understood one when there's no number present. For the molecular versus empirical formula, remember if they give you the empirical formula and they give you a mass, you're going to do the mass of the empirical formula as it's written. We're going to do this the same way we did gram formula mass when we add it together. If the formula was CH2, 14 grams would be its mass. Then we do the mass of the molecular over the mass of the empirical, and we get a number. And the number that came out when we divided in the calculator is 8. That means that we multiply the empirical formula out by that number, so 8 times 1 and 8 times 2 and we get C8H16 as my molecular formula. And that is the end of the moles and stoichiometry extra practice packet. We went over one of each type of question. Hopefully you found this useful, and if you have any more questions, 
certainly feel free to send me a message back on that remind thread. You can email me, you can send me a message there that'll go to my email, or you can email me at my school email address. Have a great day. Happy studying.